This video is sponsored by Dry Bell Guitar Effects of Croatia. Hi there, Perfecto De Castro here and welcome to my channel. I hope you're having a great day. In this video, I'm going to show you how to hear and play with compression with the help of the brand new Module 4 compressor pedal from Dry Bell. Here we go. Compression is an often misunderstood effect, mainly because it does not drastically change your guitar tone, and it is an effect that is usually felt than heard. So I figured the best way for me to demo the Module 4 compressor pedal is to show you guys how to hear compression and how to play with compression. <laughs> Along with the tips and deep dive into compressor controls, I'll also show you how the Module 4 solves a lot of the issues that plague typical compressor pedals. Drybell is a very good friend and supporter of my channel, so thank you very much for sponsoring yet another video and for sending me my very own Module 4 to play with and to show off to all you guys. Please give them some love, check out their website, the link is in the description. The Module 4 is Drybell's take on the classic Dan Armstrong Orange Squeezer compressor from the 70s. However, instead of building a straight up clone, Drybell made the Orange Squeezer an option in the Module 4. So you can choose between the warm vintage tone of the Orange Squeezer circuit or the modern and crisp tone of a full frequency compressor. And aside from the pedal's visible controls, there are hidden functions that address your typical compressor pedal problems. Now let's start with the bottom row of knobs. Preamp controls the input gain and drives the compressor stage, and you can use it to adjust the amount of compression you need. Attack and release are your typical compressor controls. Attack controls the reaction time of the compressor, while release controls the time before the compressor stops compressing. You also tweak this knob if you want to shape the sustain of your guitar tone. Now let's go to the top row of knobs. Blend controls the mix between the compressed and uncompressed guitar signals. Fully clockwise is 100% compressed. And as you turn the knob back counterclockwise, you dial in more of your initial pick attack for a more natural feel. The tone knob works like any other tone knob. You can dial in the darkness or the brightness of your guitar tone. And the output knob serves as the makeup gain of your compressor. All the way clockwise gives you plus 17 dB of boost. And all the way anti-clockwise gives you minus 17 dB attenuation. Now if you look closely at the pedal graphics, you will notice these dot markers. And setting the knobs according to these markers gives you the default setting for the Module 4. If you are in orange mode, then that is the setting for the Dan Armstrong orange squeezer tone. And in full frequency mode, those dots represent unity gain for those controls. Now let's check out some tones. I will show you the hidden functions as I go through the playing examples. I'll be using my Shabbat Lion Special plugged into a jazz chorus amp model in Amplitude. I feel that solid state amps are the best way to hear the effects of compression, mainly because tube amps already give you some natural guitar compression and that makes the effect a little harder to listen for. And hopefully at the end of this video, you'll know what to listen for and you can adjust and tweak according to your needs. Okay, here is the dry uncompressed signal. Nice and plinky and squeaky clean. Okay, module four engage. Now what compression does is it takes the loudest parts of your guitar signal and pushes it down. And at the same time, it takes the softest parts of your guitar signal and raises it up, therefore compressing it. So you can't go louder than this threshold and any soft sound that is in the noise floor gets raised. 
So listen again, uncompressed. Compressed. So the biggest telltale sign of a compressed guitar signal is that pad-like sustain that is evident in the guitar tone. That is all the signals mashed together. Whereas an uncompressed guitar signal has that really loud initial attack and then it dies down right away. Now the module force orange mode makes it easy to hear the compression effect. So let's switch between orange and the full frequency modes. Orange mode just has that nice, warm, and fat tone that is very flattering to the guitar. While full frequency mode makes it difficult to hear the difference between compressed and uncompressed. Listen to the sustain of the notes in between. It almost sounds like a synth pad. Now, another way to hear compression is with picked arpeggios. Uncompressed arpeggios usually sound plinky and rather pointed. And a compressor just evens everything out and actually makes each note pop better. Now, right now, the compressed signal sounds a little softer than the uncompressed signal. So let's adjust the output knob to compensate. Now, another way to hear compression is to go into the extreme settings. And that is a very fast attack and a very long release. Now, this is the common mistake in setting up uh, compressor pedals. Having a very fast attack cuts off the very beginning of your guitar signal. You lose the pick attack. And having a very long release setting can muddy up your guitar signal. So now I'm gonna back off the attack a little bit and set a, a shorter release. You get some of those sparkle back. And if you don't need that much sustain, you can go for an even shorter release time. Now let's say you want that long release time and quick attack, but still want that pointed uh, pick attack from your playing. What you can do is you can back off on the blend knob. That way you introduce a little more of the dry, uncompressed signal to your guitar tone. Now this actually feels really natural, but then I also have that nice long pad-like sustain underneath the notes.
As mentioned earlier, the preamp knob affects the amount of compression. So a higher preamp setting will give you more compressed signal. Now there's also a visual reference for the compression using the status LED light. So all the way counterclockwise is the least amount of compression. And you can see the LED light go from green to slightly amber. And as you turn it up, you get more amber. And the red light tells you that you are using a lot of compression. I will say, however, that despite the really high compression settings, the Module 4 never makes your guitar tone feel squished or tiny. Okay, so here's how a compressor can help your guitar sit better in a mix. The first track will be a gravitational bluesy ballad from my good friend Elevated Jam Tracks. If you want to jam over this track, I will put the link in the description. So first pass, I will play with an uncompressed guitar signal. And then at some point, I will kick in the module four. Here we go. Okay, so the main difference is that the uncompressed guitar signal, while it does appear to sound louder, you don't hear much of the guitar pretty much after the first attack. You hear guitar and then die down quickly. Whereas with the Module 4 engaged, the initial attack is truncated, but then there's a lot of the note body that comes after it. So I'm able to shape the note and vibrato and do whatever I want with it, even though I am playing with a very, very clean tone. So to take care of the attack, let me blend some of the dry signal back in. And let's continue jamming over it.
Okay, now some of you with really sharp ears may be hearing a little bit of noise coming from my guitar, uh, this noise. And that is because a compressor, as already mentioned, raises all the soft parts of your guitar tone. So this is part of the noise floor, which is um, hard to hear when, without a compressor. It's basically not there. And with a compressor, it amplifies all the soft bits. Now to address that, the module four has an expander to address that particular issue. And you engage it by holding on the main foot switch for two seconds. And when the LED light turns blue, that means you have the expander engaged. See, no noise. <laughs> And then you can control how fast or how slow the expander kicks in. And that is by uh, pressing on the orange mode button five times. Okay, so quick. And then slow. I prefer a quick uh, engagement of the expander. So now... <laughs> now this is especially handy if you like using a compressor in front of, let's say, a drive pedal or a dirty amp. Now a common reason why some guitar players don't like compressor pedals is they say it takes away their playing dynamics. And I sort of beg to differ because um, it doesn't really take away your dynamics. It just puts the dynamics in a different aspect of your playing. So instead of soft to loud, the dynamic now is the change in timbre. Let me show you. If I pick lightly, you get this sound. And if I pick hard, it sounds like this. Now let's compare that without the module four. Loud. <laughs> okay, the main difference is that my intention is the same. However, without the compressor, you barely hear anything from the soft passage and the aggressive passage is like really loud. The compressor evens all of that out, but still uh, keeps your original intention intact. And that is important, especially if you're playing within a track, because you don't want your soft passages to be buried in the mix and then jump out way in front of the mix once you start playing uh, harder. So let's hear it in context. Okay, so we just heard the module four help my guitar tone sit nicely in a more produced track. So here is something a little bit more sparse and raw. Uh, this is a funky backing track with just bass and drums. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna start playing with an uncompressed guitar signal and then I'm gonna kick in the module four at some point. Here we go.
so the module for compression filled out that sparse sonic space quite nicely. However, along with filling that space out, came uh, a rush of low end as well, which can muddy up a mix. So to counter this, the module four has another hidden function that gives you a low end cut. Now to engage the low end cut, you click the main foot switch five times. Okay. And those flashing green lights tell you that low end cut is now engaged. Okay, now let's hear that low end cut in the context of the same track. Another hidden function of the module 4 is the ability to run it in either true bypass or buffered bypass mode. And you choose by holding down the orange button for two seconds. Okay, green lights means it is in true bypass and red lights means it's in buffered bypass. And on top of that, you have the option of keeping the orange mode EQ engaged even with the module four pedal in bypass. This way, the bypass EQ and the active EQ is the same. Now, after tweaking the hidden functions, you'll want to save these settings. That way you don't have to tweak again the next time you power up the module four. Now to save your tweaks as a default, hold down the orange and the main foot switch for three seconds. And now that is saved. That way when you power down and power back up, I have the low end cut engaged and I have the expander engaged as soon as the module four turns on. Okay, there you have it. That is how to hear and play with compression. Thanks to the help of the brand new Module 4 compressor pedal from Drybell. Again, big thanks to Drybell for sponsoring this video and for giving me free reign in presenting the Module 4 compressor pedal to all you guys. If you want your very own Module 4 compressor, I will put a link to the Drybell website in the video description, so go check it out. Now, if you dug this video, please give it a thumbs up like, hit subscribe if you haven't yet, and don't forget to ring that bell. And let me know what you think of the Module 4 compressor pedal in the comment section below. Can you now hear the difference between an uncompressed and compressed guitar signal? Let me know. Now click on an end card to go watch my other dry bell videos, the Engine Foundation preamp or the dry bell Vibe Machine version three. Or you can just go grab your guitar and play something. You all know the drill? Practice makes perfecto. Cheers, guys. Mm -hmm.